how to tackle 2020. Toronto Real Estate in 2020 is going to be very, very different than anything you've been used to. And today we're going to talk about what are the differences and how to tackle it. Hello everyone, this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Asian Mortgage Broker, Research Realty, Search Mortgage. And today we're going to talk about Toronto Real Estate in 2020 and beyond. I'm going to show you why I think, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, that everything you've been used to, everything you know is going to be very, very different. Okay, so let's go. Uh, Yossi Kaplan here, I work at Search Realty, Toronto Real Estate Asian Mortgage Broker. And today we're going to look at what's happening in uh, 2020. I'm going to show you an email that I received recently with uh, new construction, uh, some price increases and uh, some good links that you can all use. And then we're going to, um, at the end of the video, I'm going to review the market because I know a lot of you like it and I'm going to give you some uh, information about the market. So first of all, we're going to start with what's happening with 2020. 2020 is going to be a year, is the year that is separating the men from the boys, the investors from the yellers, those who can actually um, make good decisions and those who are just flailing their hands and screaming <laughs> in drama. Okay, so if you're one of those who scream in drama, um, this is not the channel for you. If you're an investor, that want to learn about investing and like to share your opinion like I share with you, this is the place for you. Okay, um, Toronto Real Estate, uh, Toronto Real Estate, Toronto Condos for Sale.com. We're adding all the new buildings, lots and lots of buildings. So you'll probably see quite a few buildings added here. Um, and what's happening now is you're going to see a slew of buildings which are large and big <laughs> and strategically located and expensive coming in. These, these are like the new style of buildings. Um, you can see the architecture is a bit new. It's no longer the glass, all glass. The architects are trying to reduce some glass because you know we had the glass falling because it freezes and then the glue dries up and all that stuff. And also because Toronto is so much of the same. If you look at this email, um, we got the prime condos coming up. We got 101 Spadina condos coming up, which is a kind of nice uh, neo architecture plus modern on top. Uh, we got 411, which I just showed you on torontoconnorsforsale.com. That's coming up. Uh, that's lovely. That's the LCBO. 42 stories, 614 units. So a lot of small units here, okay? And remember, a lot of small units means high dollar per foot. So you can easily expect a 500 square feet unit to be no less than 600,000. And that means 1,200 a foot. At 750,000 means 1,500 a foot. I guess it, they, they come somewhere in between where the high units probably get a bit of a higher price. You know, one or $2,000 uh, difference per floor over 42 stories, stories could be forty to $80,000 difference uh, on the same unit, high or low. And it's a whole other video, should you buy low or should you buy high? If you want me to make a video about that, just put it in the comments. Um, couldn't use the Loom video today, so there's no head bubble, but whatever. Uh, there's other things like IQ3 condos, is it an Queensway should expect a bit of a discount coming in here, but you know, um, a thousand bucks a foot may be a great investment. Eleven hundred, I'm probably gonna see what my options are. Uh, and there's a lot of options in assignments right now in the eleven hundred uh, space, where you know, if this comes at thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, it's something you don't want to consider. Of course, a lot of people buying at thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, they don't want to close, they just want to flip it. But flipping is gonna get more and more difficult because your margin is squeezed as the number gets higher. They're just the math. So you got to calculate, you got to plan strategically. You can't just go stand in line and buy any condo that some uh, sales agent tells you. You got to be a lot smarter than this. Now you also have options like Daniel's Keelsdale's condo. Okay, so that's uh, Keel and Eglinton West. It's all the way west. It's a nice little community here in Daniel's. You know, it's a huge developer. Uh, there's number 55 Mercer. 45 story, 557 unit condo by Center Court, which is a great, uh, great co company. But you know, we look at this thing, and uh, the location is fantastic. There's a lot of stuff coming to King and, King and uh, Spadina. Uh, so there'll be a bit of competition. Number 55 Mercer here, which is, uh, you know, Nobu is at uh, 15 to 35. So basically on that strip of the Nobu. So that's close to Nobu. That's coming in. This will have to bring prices close to Nobu and give quality close to Nobu for it to be considered. Okay, but of course Nobu was sold a while back. So anyone that bought a Nobu bought themselves a quality of 1500 foot or 2000 a foot or paid a lot less. So the quality of this building has to improve all the time, which is really good for us. Uh, nonetheless, the price still going up. Okay, there's a bright water condo. So now we're spreading out. And as we spread out, we have to because the price is pushing people out. I talked about it in 2019 and let's just keep going. 
Uh, there's the Untitled, which the rapper, forget, uh, some guy had some ad for it. So they gain like a 15 seconds of fame, 15 nanoseconds of fame. Okay, so that's Untitled, Yaganeg, which is a great location, of course. Um, what is this? Queensky and Richardson. Queensky E. So that's uh, out east, uh, east bayfront. I've uh, talked less about the east side. There's so much stuff happening, and I like to stay in the center. But you remember that I'm not a big fan of being on the subway. I mean, it's good if you can be on a subway like here, but at some kind of prices and the density that along the subway is, and the fact that you can actually use the subway, it's kind of, you know, like being on the subway. A lot of immigrants that come from China used to the subway in the large cities or Hong Kong. They just have to be on the subway because they don't know anything else and they just don't have the capacity to think of the world without subway. As an investor, you have to have capacity to start thinking from different perspectives and different cultural perspectives, okay? So if you come from a kind of a Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, Euro culture like myself, you prefer the designer buildings, you like long-term investments, you like to make one move at a time and make a really good move. If you come from the east, you may use to a faster pace. You have more cash available to you so you can buy and sell quickly and try to flip a lot of units. Of course, as they flip more and more units, the market itself grows and, you, um, and we'll review it uh, later. I'll show you um, a fact that the market grows here. But for now, I'm trying to focus and, uh, and I'll explain uh, towards the end of the video why the market's growing. Uh, but here, what you can see is you really got to focus on quality. So when this building comes in line, obviously, you may not have a lot of time to get ready for it. You know, when that building uh, 357 King came, it literally sold overnight at 1,200 foot. And no, no, n there's like no qualms about this. So at 13, 1,400 foot, I think this could sell overnight too. And imagine Galleria, if you got in there at 900 or 1,000 a foot, or even uh, Keeley that I told you about at 1,000 a foot, that's 30 or 40% less than these things. Can you get 30, 40% more rent here? I don't know. You got to think about it. Can you sell it for 30 or 40% more? Will, will, will these, these ex super expensive buildings rise in price 30 or 40% more? I don't know. You're the investor, you gotta do your homework. Of course, if you're looking to invest, you got the cash burning in your pocket, give me a call and, and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. I meet a lot of people one-on-one, -on -one. that's my favorite. Okay, that's a really gorgeous building. Looking, that's a big community here. 2,300 residential units. Okay, it's kind of a confusing name festival because we have the festival condos and we have the festival tower. I would not use the name festival. I'm not sure why you would do that when we already have an established name festival. That could create a lot of confusion. Also, imagine that somebody used to 80 John and they put the 80 John address in here, but whatever. Uh, but that's actually not in town. That's in that's in Vaughan there. Okay, but there's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, all these things are coming up, you know. The Jarvis and Gerard, the Jarvis Corridor, lots of opportunities there. Um, the King of Spadina, you got 101 Spadina right here, okay. Then you got 411 King, which is King of Spadina, right here. And then you got uh, Mercer, which is also King of Spadina, right here. So you got 557 units. Then you got 614 units, so that's uh, 614 and 557. That's 11, 6, almost 1,200. And then let's add, doesn't say how many, but say 500. So there's 1,700 units, 1,700 units, new ones coming to King of Spadina right away. So what would that do to the rental market when I add, and let's say all these more or less sell in the same time, and all these complete more or less in the same time, I'm going to add 1,700 units plus, say, 2,000 units because there's probably a couple other buildings going to be completing or selling in that area still. I'm going to add 2,000 units just to that corner unit. Uh, imagine the average a person uh, load occupancy per unit is 1.3 or 1.5. That means I'm adding about 3,000 people living at King Espadina just from these three or four buildings. 3,000 people. Okay? So... Can you put 3,000 people on the streetcar in the subway every day? Of course not. <laughs> Just not possible. Can you add all these people on the subway? Of course not. Not possible. You know, uh, Toronto is a small town. Um, the subway has been built here in the 60s. There's only two lines. You know, the subway relief line is a ridiculous idea. We don't need a relief line. We need a real plan with lots and lots of subway. And it doesn't matter how much it costs. It, it just has to be done. Because we're not going to be New York City or Paris if we're not going to have the subway 
you know, Paris is the subway, the metro, and the area, which is the fast subway. We don't have anything. We have two lines that are chugging along. Okay. Um, LinkedIn, Yossi Kaplan, if you want to look at me here, that's totally cool. Um, I've been adding uh, over the holidays, I've added the Vice, the Forbes channel. Uh, this lady, her name is Sunny Landa Ruzzi or something like that, Lena Duzzi. Uh, she's great. She's just talking about you know entrepreneurship. So I've added, and people like it. 40, 40 views. Thank you. Uh, there's Patrick Bet David. He's amazing. Also about entrepreneurship. So I'm adding more of like a like a personal touch and fun stuff to my streams. Uh, those go on the Twitter as well. If you follow by the Twitter, and I just want to mix the content a little bit, uh, just to give you a bit more fun. We look at the content we'll see if it makes sense elon musk of course is doing great stuff i want to do like a full tesla video soon um, but you can see here and there's also like the regular stuff but um, there's not a lot of real estate came in over the holidays but there's a lot of the general media so you get a lot of this but there's all kinds um, i showed you the email let's jump in here for a second so um, in toronto condos uh, for sale .com, uh, this is a third party they're going to add some condos for you soon uh, but you've seen here already. So if you want information on any of these condos, uh, send me an email or put it in the comments. Obviously, I need your contact info to send you anything. So make sure you contact me. Now go to condos.ca, log in. And once we go here, uh, this page here represents the last uh, 14 days. Now, today is January 8th, so 14 days, nothing much happened. There was, you know, New Year's happened and most people were off, but still, they're looking at 87 sold and 280 rented reported uh, reported deals. Now there's a lot of deals that are not reported on time or maybe not being scraped in the system. So the actual number is probably higher. Nonetheless, if you look at this timeline here, you can see what's going on. Uh, you can see we're eating here. Uh, we're hitting the level of about 770 a foot, 765, 763. So 2019 was was just berserk here, okay, and you know. December, January, prices are coming down every year. Look at this here. It just comes down a little bit and then it just blasts off. And it comes down and it blasts off. And it comes down and it blasts off. That means that if you're in the market, especially if you're in the market for an assignment or if you're in the market for a resale, this is your chance. Why am I saying that? Because new construction is not seasonal. The price is the price is the price. The developer doesn't care because they already own the land and they're not going to start building until they sold about 70% of the building anyways. So they don't care. Okay, it's, it's well financed. They're not going to go to market unless they're financed. They can't do it. But for the resale, one person selling or assignment just want to get rid of it and sell it. Uh, that is a good that is very, very good. So if you are in, in, in the market to buy an investment unit, that is not that expensive this is actually your chance to do it because you can do it now okay you can always go to uh, urban urban uh, oh, urban realty toronto.com there you go okay and i'll show you and this will be updated soon I'm gonna add some stuff that's a newsletter thank you very much for downloading this one in the condo calculator uh right here these are all made searches these are live searches so you can just hit any of these here and it basically open or any of these here and it basically hit a market for you. So if I want to look at the financial district, I'm just going to hit this link here. This is all pre pre programmed. So this is a link that is just basically blocking a small place on the map and then you can start playing with the filters and see what comes out right now. It's pre programmed to all studios. So zero beds, one bath. OK, because I don't want to I want to skip commercial spaces or parking or lockers. And then you can hit these buttons here. And you can play along and just see what you get. Okay, and then you can start looking. Now I'm not logged in here, um, but nonetheless, you can see what's available for sale. So you can also filter by newest listing first, sort, sorry. So latest listing, I think it's already like that. No. So there you go. So you got some uh, units of temperance. I think it's showing double because it's registered both with the MLS and the uh, realtor. Okay, that's fine. And here you start to see everything that came on the market the last few days. Okay, from the this one just came on the market and this came in the market a few days ago. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. 197 Young just completed, beautiful unit. 88, uh, I think that's an assignment. Okay, so you can see a lot of stuff come on the market, especially with the assignments. I think there's a lot of um, room for negotiation here. 
especially when so many units come into the market, this is your chance um, to grab units at lesser price than you could buy them on the open market or from the developer if you buy the assignment. Now, obviously, the assignment needs a bit more cash, um, but it's negotiable, it's not fixed. You know, most developers do not negotiate, but this is. You, we can negotiate for assignment. A lot of people bought these things. You see, there's a lot of units in 197. So if you wanted a unit at 197 or similar, all along the Young Street, a 197 is Young and Queen. You do not need to be on the subway there. Okay, so you're on Young Street, but don't need to be on the subway. If you wanted to be on the subway, that's cool. But you don't need the subway from Queen Street to go to King. You just walk. You don't need the subway to go to Union. You just walk. If you need it, it's there. If you want to go north, there's less traffic. So it's not bad, okay? And obviously, if you want a three-bedroom, two-bath, or 1.15 million. But this price, again, it's negotiable because it's not pre-construction. Now, it doesn't mean that the owner will negotiate, but when there's so many units for sale in one building, you, we may find a good deal. And that's what I'm doing. Same with the temperance building that completed recently, okay? Another thing you're going to see, there's more units for rent on the market and the reason is, is simply because when there's more and more units come on the market, you'll have more numbers. And that's what I meant earlier when I said, you know, I'll show you the actual number of transactions, the sales activity is growing, okay? So there's, now obviously in December, and I'm going to jump here to the market watch for December that was just released yesterday. And it says here, Toronto, January 7, 2020. Toronto Real Estate Board uh, released, and they're saying here 17.4% year over year to 4,399, 4,400 units. So December sold less than 38, 3,750 units in 2018, and a year later we sold uh, 4,400 units. So that's four, uh, there's 354 units more, sorry, three plus four, four, uh, 750 four units more than we saw last year that's a lot 750 units that means that in december 20 i don't know 22 23 24 units every day every hour in december of 2019 sold december 2018 plus a unit every day every day they sold everything they sold last year plus a unit every hour on the hour okay look at the prices the price was 749 say 750 and now it's 837, almost 840. For 50 plus 37, 80, $87,000. Average price, $87,000, okay? Now 87 over 749, that's over 10%. That is very, 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 very high, okay? So the sales average is 17.4%. That's the 800 unit plus. Uh, the new listings are way less. Active listings are way less because people don't want to sell. And then the average price is up by 11.9%, 12%, okay, between last December and this December that just passed a week ago. The average days on market is done by two days. That's okay. It's always around the 30 days. If that's going to get to, you know, 40 days, that's serious. But right now, it just shows you that people are still buying what's out for selling and those who are selling are more or less online with what the market is willing to accept now remember i told you many times that all the units are not selling and they come back on the market their price reduce and come back they're not going to show here they're not going to show you so there's a lot a lot more units they haven't sold because they asked too much and they went back on the market now every day i get someone that calls me and say i want to sell my unit for a million dollars i go okay but you know that unit of that type that you just sold is the, your neighbor sold a similar one above you exactly above you they sold it for two hundred thousand less why would you why would you get a million well because the average price they look at the average price and you go and the average price for this and that building is so much okay but maybe you're not comparing the same building maybe you're not comparing the same market maybe you're comparing city place to king west maybe you're comparing yorkville to key queen east whatever okay so uh, the analytics the emotions and analytics are always confused here and the best way to see emotions and analytics if you go to my youtube okay and when you look at the comments and you know i don't respond to comments every day once in a while once in a while i go, I, I go and i look at the comments and once you look at the comments that people leave here they're very emotional which is totally good because it's very very hard to like understand this crazy market you know um, we we've been bred and kind of programmed to think that there's the market should not change and everything should be the same and prices should go up 
But that is a lie, my friend. The real thing is that we live in an inflationary economy, okay? Uh, value of US dollar over time, that's all you need to know. So the more money we print, the less the value goes down, okay? That's half of the story. Dollar to German marks, dollar to dollar, dollar to this, purchasing power, inflation, it's all the same. So the more we print, the more we print money, the less the value is. And I remember my popsicle example is the popsicle was $1 in 2019. And now we print all this money. And so the dollar will be $2 because we have so many dollars, but they're worth half because we doubled our money circulation. So this is a very easy example, but that's how it works. So even if you think inflation rates, the purchasing power of US dollar, look at this thing. It basically, if it was in 1900, it was 100 bucks. In 2010, it was $3.50, and in 2020, that's 10 years already, it's way less. So if you stashed $100 under the mattress um, 110 years ago, you can buy a popsicle now. But how, what would, would that popsicle cost $100 110 years ago, 120 years ago? Of course not. You could have probably bought a house for that amount, okay? So here's the thing, that's the thing. I don't know how much a house costs. You can see uh, Treb, where's that thing? Okay, so 1973, this is a detached home. Uh, they didn't have condos then. Cost you 16,355. And you can see it went by $1,000. Now you think $1,000 is all at all, but $1,000 over 16, that's about 6%. Okay, and then he went even more, he went down a bit, and he evened out on and on and on and you know we have a bit of a jump because we had inflation and then it kind of quieted down and the last four years that's where we opened the immigration flood and if you're not talking about immigration and it doesn't have to do with where the people come from on immigrant too so i can totally talk about immigration without getting slack for it but the thing that we bring more immigration more money in canada as we import rich into canada prices will go up because these people can afford more and we locals here, we go, oh, look at all these people with money bags coming in. Let's just, let's just sell them stuff for more and more and more. But of course, it's also hurting us because now we have to pay the same price. Now, I'm not saying immigration is the whole story, but it's a huge part of the story. The other story, the other part of the story is, of course, supply and demand. And finally, it's the time value of money. So all these together, that's what you get. And when you look here at the sales and average, and I'm going to run through this for you. See if I can make it slightly. How do I move in this file? Can I do it? No. Okay. Um, so this is the end of 2019 sales and average price. Okay. Um, I'm not crazy about the totals because because how can you compare Toronto, which is a whole bunch of stick towers, to Mississauga, which is mostly single homes with a bit of concentration of condos, but nonetheless, the detached home in Toronto uh, average 1.3. And in 905, 950, the semi is about a million bucks in 700, the townhome 717. See, the townhome is almost the same. If you buy a townhome, if you can find a 416 townhome for this price, it makes a lot more sense to me. Okay? And the condo 650, that thing, 650, 650, that is the number to focus on because that's what we're here for. And you're going to see that these condos are going to come more and more and more. Now, if you do the condo calculator, and you're not going to believe who's downloaded the condo calculator. I mean, there's real estate agents, there's brokers, there's broker of records downloading this. I'm, I'm sure, like, yeah, this thing, I think a lot of people are going to download it. It's actually, it's really good. It's really good. I'm impressed with my skills there. And, you know, like, there's, there's you got to want to, you got to, you want to keep it simple but accurate. Uh, the more information I add, the more accurate it can become, but obviously the less simple and the less accessible it is. So, you know, I, I, I make it as simple as possible. Kind of try to show all, all the avenues, and at the same time, you got you got to make your own you got to make your own calculation. But that's a good tool, and soon I'll have some more calculators out. It's very very busy these days. So back here, the 660, you're gonna put that number in the calculator after you download it, and you will see how much that condo will cost you to run per month. And then you're gonna look at the rental rates, and you can do that through condos.ca. Or if you're a client of mine, I'll do it for you. Or if you're not a client of mine, call me and I'll do it for you. And then you'll see the rental rates and, and we'll estimate the condo fees, the taxes, uh, all the costs. We can even estimate the closing costs and see what it's worth for you to buy. Now, a lot of these condos are not going to break even on, on the regular 2080. 
and you're going to have to put more money down or put a little bit more money every month or do something else that will allow you to buy it, which is fine. That's how it is, and that's what you're going to have to do from now on. Now, if you cannot fathom it, then you have to move outside of the Toronto to B and C markets. So Hamilton, of course, um, maybe on the east side, which is the Oshawa area, Clarington, or west, which is the Niagara, all the way to Fort Erie, Brantford, Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph. Okay, that's that's where I think you're going to see a lot of action there. And actually, I got an email today showing me that they're going to raise prices on certain development by ten thousand dollars per unit, and that's out in the five one nine, ten thousand. Now those units average four and five hundred, so it's a four to five percent increase, and they're just arbitrary increase overnight, and people will buy because they'll say, you know what, I'd rather buy this here. And pay another ten thousand dollars here because the twenty percent of the ten is two thousand divided by four payments. So it's really I gotta pay five hundred bucks every payment if it's four payments. That's really the increase. The rest is gonna be on my mortgage, or I pay it later. But that's what you're gonna have to do. If you can't do it, there is there's a studio zero bed for five ninety nine. Okay, if this studio is four hundred square feet, um, that studio is fifteen hundred a foot. You got that? 1500 foot plus closing costs plus land transfer tax plus vacancy it's not cheap and the one bedroom on the 23rd floor this is a studio on the top floor so it may you know if, if, if the design is good a lot of studios are very good if the design is good and it's livable and you can actually sleep not in your kitchen which is a lot of studios <laughs> design in a very lame lame way which is a, a polite way to say stupid I'm sorry, architects. You gotta, you, you gotta do it, okay? You gotta give us better units all the time. I'll charge you for it. I'll, I'll talk to every architect. <laughs> I ran into a very famous architect in town uh, one night, a couple of years ago on the street. I grabbed him, and uh, let's call him John. It's not his name, but everyone knows him. He's been in the papers all the time. I said, John, those interior designs, you know, they're not good enough. I can't. That, that kitchen on the sidewall. I sit in my little kitchen. It's a 10 foot wide unit, it's a 12 foot wide unit. I cannot look at my kitchen. You gotta make it better. He's like, yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay, here's a studio for 618. It's a one bedroom for 620. Which one will you get? 52nd floor, the seller is obviously thinking it's worth more money, but will they get it? Well, you can give them an offer because there's so many units for sale in, in the same building because it just came online we may be able to actually grab a unit basically go to all the sellers and say who wants to give me the best price now i have to warn you and i'm going to make a whole video with this that in december last december just a few days ago we've been receiving a lot of random fake offers so the agent will call you and they tell you yeah the, 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 they're good and all that and then they give you all like this huge thing and this huge offer to buy the assignment and it's first of all it's not what they told you on the phone they're going to send you it's totally different. There's hide the numbers in there. And second, <laughs> it just, anyway, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it another, it's, it's already, we're already 28 minutes in, but you got to watch for these offers because they'll give you an offer, they'll tell you everything is good, but they don't send the deposit. And I heard this from other, other agents too. What happens when they don't send the deposit is they probably send all these offers to all these people and then they disappear they stop calling you they don't send the deposit and before you know it they just send it to all these other agents but there's no way to track it because we cannot track all the offers coming in if you had to register your offer say with the government of ontario and they would they would not be able to register 12 offers uh, and only one day buy and then you can say that buyer is not a real buyer they're sending all these offers and they're actually signing and executing the offers but not sending deposits but we can't track it because of the system but if we could track it this will go away okay but watch out um, you're gonna see a lot more of you know one and two million dollar condos that's becoming basically the norm now you can see there's a lot of that stuff going on and also you're in the financial district so that that's the price um, go back to these videos these videos are very good uh, whether it's talking about the market, where it's talking about why the things, how to calculate, this is the condo calculator, which units are better, and I'll show you. Uh, ANX at 1300 a foot, very good investment in my opinion. Because, you know, if two or three months ago you looked at 1300 a foot, oh my God, I can't do it, I can't afford it, da 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 da. But now it's cheaper than others. 
And if somebody else bought it and you had the ability to buy it, why didn't you? Because you're afraid, you weren't sure of yourself, all that stuff. It's all emotional. It's always emotional. The answer is always emotional. Uh, because, the, you know, the Warren Buffetts, they just learn. And that's why he's 89 years old. He learned not to be emotional and just, like, think about it. And he goes, okay, I'll make the best decision for me. And over time, he makes more good decisions than not so good decisions. And that's what you got to do. You got to average up. Okay, this is it, my friends. This is it for the first uh, video of 2020. Very happy to have you back. Very happy to be back. I didn't go anywhere. Just took a little break. Uh, Prime Condo is coming up. 101 Spadina is coming up. 411 King Street is coming up. Um, I'll focus on these ones here. And of course, number 55 Mercer is coming up. If you're interested in these buildings and the price list, just send me an email or register and you'll get the, the emails. The moment I have the prices and the access, it will go to the mailing list before you know about it. If you want to be on a mail list, go to any of my sites and simply just sign for it. Okay, there's contact, there's newsletter. If you sign any of these, you'll get, you'll get the price. Okay, good enough. Everyone, good luck. Happy New Year. Uh, do well. Do well for yourself. Have a beautiful year. Wish you luck. I'll see you soon.